Hello Webs, hi. This is Fahad from Future Phones and today we are fixing a Chromebook and uh, it's a HP Chromebook that we are going to fix today. Um, since uh, this Chromebook is using USB Type-C so there is always uh, difficulty in diagnosing this type of board and uh, we do not usually have the schematics for this board so there is in the charging section there is usually a couple of things that uh, you need to look at and uh, if you can diagnose it properly you can fix most of these boards as well so for example if I take you to the microscope here and uh, one of these I see here this is uh, parad IC here this IC goes faulty many times uh, which is this one here uh, so this I see goes faulty parad and the number is uh, if I can get the number of this I see is uh, is uh, PS 8751B this I see usually goes faulty and uh, then we have this I see as well 8719E this also goes faulty many times so these type of uh, boards have a very complicated charging circuit because we do not have the schematics and then this IC is also responsible for uh, data communication through the USB-C type here so because uh, C type is a smart charging port it can deliver the power and as well as input output of the data so input output data is controlled by this slim port i see if they go faulty then uh, you will have power issues and uh, if i put my the app meter so you can re see what kind of reading i'm getting here at the 5 volt 0 3 amps you can see it's only taking 5 5 volt 4 volt so to get this board going we need at, at least 14 volts being delivered to the board and then the board will start working in cases where there is only receiving 5 volt um, there is problem with the charging circuit and you can also see it's also taking some of some ampere as well so this could be indication you know like 0.379 is taking this ampere as well so this is a sign of kind of short as well um, so it's taking f 5 volts and there is some shortage that's also taking this 0.373 milliamps so that's why our board is not going into the next step where it's it can absorb up to uh, 14 volt or 20 volts to uh, go into the working condition now uh, we are not in that situation so when when you when there is a problem like this you can test these ic's by checking if there is any short circuit on the charging ic section so for example if i go here so i'm in the diode mode range and hopefully my multimeter will show up So I'm in the diode mode range and uh, if I test para IC here so you can see this IC is not showing any short and we can also test this one here it's not showing any short here so one pin is probably ground so could be okay if it's only one pin is ground then it's fine if let's say four or five pins are ground then you can investigate more and you can check through the data sheet if it is really uh, this pin is connected to ground or it is not connected to ground and due to a short circuit the IC is uh, IC that pin is uh, connected to the ground so in this one I've already diagnosed it so you can see that those two ICs did, did not show any issues but uh, so if I check here near this slim port I see here so you can see that uh, this slim port IC has already got uh, some marks here and so, so 
this pin is short to ground this pin is has a low resistance and this pin is also short to ground in the data pins it is quite likely that these pins are connected to i2c lines or uh, these i2c lines are connected to the cpu or uh, so this uh, ic could be faulty on this one because uh, you can see this pin is short here and uh, i know that slim port ic has no lags connected to the ground on the surface i mean like any or none of these pins are connected to ground you can see except for this one and if this is connected to ground you can also check one more thing that this is uh, uh, this pin is going into a capacitor and the capacitor has two sides so one side is this side and this is a complete ground so this is supposed to be ground but when you come here this side is connected to this pin here of the capacitor and this is also beeping to ground so in this case my doubt will go on this ic and uh, i will try and change it the physical condition is also not very good of this ic i will just uh, try and remove it And after I remove this IC, I will also check if my pin that was showing connected to ground or showing the short, uh, does that pin have a different behavior? If it behaves differently after the IC is removed, then is definitely the IC that we need to change. can see this is the dot and this is the dot this is the pin one here we remove this okay and now I'm going to check if so you see the short on this capacitor is gone is no more short here so before it was showing connected to ground and you can check this side this is a complete ground this is a full ground so there is it's connected to the ground this a, this side of the capacitor but here this should not be connected to ground and it is not in this case here this is showing um, you can see here it's not connected to ground so i have a replacement ic ready already and uh, i will just put this replacement ic here just check one physical uh, yes okay when these pins are connected they are not good in this case just fix these pins here okay and now I'll put this IC here and then you will see so pin 1 is here This time I'll press this IC, give the air again, and press it. So we have some excess solder here, we'll remove. Okay, let's 
Let's eat it. Okay, so now time to test. So our problem was it was only receiving 5 volt and not uh, 14 or 20 volts as the board requires. So let's check now if anything changes. Now it's receiving 14 volts. So that's it. The job is done uh, because there could be some other issues as well but you know in case if the board is off and it's not powering on and you find the problem what make made it to go off i think that's the only problem then but we will still give it a test and uh, check it if there is any other issues but this job is done you can check it in the housing as well if it is giving any display and i'll take you to this uh, big board here I get the display. Is it power on? Come on. So the ampere is in the uh, point eighty-seven, point ninety-six. But it's taking fourteen volts. Quite likely, it can take some time to power on. So, just trying to boot. We have no display yet. It's possible that my LCD connect is not connected properly. Let me just check. Just put this connector back on. My LCD is connected now. Okay, so I think I'll need to connect the battery as well because these boards sometimes they do not power on without battery. So let's check without with battery. And this way everything. Uh, in the 4 volt range right now 4 volt and 4.35 if everything is right then sh should do something ok so we are still in 4 volt and 2.6 amps this board can restart a couple of times before it gives display. Still waiting.
happen to you? Yeah, it's gone to 6 volt now and 14 volts now. Oh yes, we can see, you can see display. So what I have to do actually put some uh, copper on top of the CPU to get the display. Yeah, I think LCD cable is still loose, so I'll just reconnect it again. Okay, let's check it. Yeah, it is loose from here. Check, check. So yeah, we have a display now, and uh, you can see uh, our amp meter is also showing 14, 14 volts. Uh, I hope you can see. And it's charging also. So yeah, it's coming up again. It auto focus. Yeah, my multimeter uh, amp meter is also sh showing 14. So this job is done. This laptop is fixed. Thank you for watching. If you like this sort of content, do like and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.